What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Three Way Podcast. I'm Jerks. Joining me today is, of course, Los, aka Public Enemy Five Nine. <coughs> we got oh, is that is that Ronan from last night? We got JP, <laughs> aka Linkser One Hundred One, and of course, the Man the Myth Legend, JD, Cowboy McKinney. What's up? All right, so uh, I think we got a pretty beefy episode today. So let's go ahead and start with gaming. Game over. Game over. <laughs> All right, gaming this week. Well, hasn't happened yet, but this Sunday tomorrow, Ubisoft is doing their little event, the one that would have done at E3. RIP. Ubisoft's forward event comes out uh, starts tomorrow at two. Don't worry about the time. You this is in the, this is in the past for you. But anyways, prior to that, there's already been leaks. So apparently, yeah. uh, it's pretty much all but confirmed. Far Cry 6 will be announced. Uh, we have uh, the villain, I believe, uh, already has been like revealed. Uh, Ubisoft at this point already also showed like a quick clip, a teaser on, on the Twitters. Uh, there's also been already leaks of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, like 30 minutes of gameplay. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. I've been, man, dude, I've been doing this all week. I don't know what's wrong with me. I got the road. <clears throat> Drink more water. I know, dude. <laughs> Drink more water. <laughs> and, uh, I yeah, I mean, I'm going to let y'all talk about I drink some water. Tell me about the <laughs> Uh Yeah, so um, it's, it's pretty – I mean, Ubisoft is known for leaks. Uh, they can never hold anything in. Uh, they're like me when I was like 16 year old, uh, two pumps and boom, everything's out. Um, but yeah, <laughs> these, these guys are known for the leagues. This is not surprising. The couple of days before, boom, everything comes out. But there's some pretty cool news. Uh, Far Cry 6, uh, one of my favorite series. Um, uh, you know, they got sequels going to be coming out. Uh, it looks like it's a c- continuation of one of their previous games, Far Cry 3. So I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, and we got a bunch of uh, a game, a thirty-minute gameplay of Valhalla, which, in my opinion, looks pretty trash. But you know, uh, <laughs> all these guys are saying that you know it's pre-alpha. Uh, what we're gonna see at the at the at the, uh, at the forward, event. whatever yeah, yeah, what's it called, Ubisoft forward. Oh, we saw yeah. forward tomorrow. Uh, should be look better. So, and I well, hope so. supposedly, like that that, that video that leaked. Like, we're supposed to see that tomorrow, but, like, we're only supposed to see, like, little highlights of it, like, the best parts of it. So, we'll probably, we'll see that same gameplay tomorrow. Who knows? Uh, for sure, we, uh, I know, I know I'm going to be uh, streaming it, so I'll probably see myself, see how it goes. Uh, I'm not expecting much, but as far as, like, mm-hmm. the leaks are concerned, Valhalla, I mean, it doesn't look exciting. It just looks like another Assassin's Creed game at this point again. Uh, Far Cry 6, I really don't care about. <clears throat> like even even like the watchdogs. Well, I don't, I really don't care about that either. Uh, mm-hmm. uh. So the Far Cry Six leak also like included like a synopsis from like I forgot what what PlayStation uh like region it was, but they had like the synopsis of the game and there it was like pretty mundane. It's like typical assassin. Like I mean Far Cry. So I'm kind of like uh, like whatever. I haven't played Far Cry since Part Three, so I'm just like okay whatever. Another Far Cry. Another one for people that, like go shoot around and you know collect their flags or i don't know i i uh i'm not very excited for ubisoft i haven't really found a game to latch onto, uh to be honest uh, i already let go of assassin's creed uh since they killed uh, uh desert miles so ever since then i haven't I haven't even really uh, uh played that um what i can tell you is in regards to the leaks for valhalla we we know we kind of have a date around when this because it's supposed to be for the new console as well right Elias? it's yeah. supposed to come out for the new console yeah so it's it, the leak says it's supposed to come out november 17th 2020 <laughs> so it gives us a timetable when the xbox is set to come out i don't think it's going to be on the exact same date as assassin's creed it might be before uh so that's i think somewhat of an exciting exciting news well there, you <laughs> there go. goes jd again. there goes jd <clears throat> but yeah um i feel like Ubisoft, I don't even know why they're doing this. They should have joined somebody, Xbox, I don't know, because from the looks of it here, these games, I mean, Watch Dogs, eh. Maybe they're hyperspace one, maybe, from what I'm seeing here. Hyperspace is supposed to come out. I mean, I, I don't know. Hyperscape? Yeah, I mean, that's just a, like a BR at this point. It's not really like, 
gonna be a crazy like like main type of game they're gonna try to advertise is mostly just to get into the br scene um i mean from my from my understanding ubisoft is mostly known for their big open world games and at this point like like games as a service games um i mean i i don't know honestly i think yeah i think i don't think i've actually been excited for a ubisoft game in a while like maybe since division one like since then probably not really like all that excited for an ubisoft game yeah the truth who has um, music or, playing Jay, <laughs> sorry that's not me that's not me um yeah no i'm 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 interested to see what they're gonna try and put out but like you said you know like like uh elia said i'm just not it, it, I'm not. I'm not like on the edge of my seat, waiting to see what they're going to do. You know, as, as we were discussing earlier, yeah, after Assassin's Stop Creed Three, I just kind of heard so loud. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you. Um, but yeah, I mean, after after Assassin's Creed Three, and I mean, I, I played Far Cry Four a little bit, but for the most part, uh, their games just have not really been grabbing my attention too yeah. much. Um, no doubt. Uh, I get what you guys are saying, like. Uh, um, and and what JP saying like there's you don't really feel like they should be having their own direct, but I mean they have the name uh, you know Assassin's Creed Far Cry, uh, Watch Dogs they have the big names in there, mm-hmm. and you, but I, I understand what you guys are saying it's like time to do something different if this is just more of the same then yeah. I feel most people are yeah. like y'all I'm not really hyped for these games if they show us hey something unique that these games are doing. Um, I think then maybe they'll get some attention. But if they if it's just higher fidelity looking games, uh, bigger yeah. worlds like Assassin's Creed, um, the previous one, what was it called? Origins. Odyssey. Oh. Uh, Origin. Oh no, I don't see Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah. Odyssey. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. exactly. Uh, Odyssey uh, was huge, man. That's a sixty-hour game. Uh, I, I think mean, this is supposed just... to be bigger now. Yeah, if their hook is just, oh, this is bigger, now it's a, eight, like, I don't know. It's not, that's not really going to catch. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Far Cry 6 is supposed to be bigger than 5. And then Far Cry, uh, and then Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla is supposed to be, like, like not as big, but more, like, things to do. Okay. So, well, like uh, I mean, hyper, 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 Hyperscape looks interesting, I guess. Um, see how that is. I'm still looking at the trailers. I'm not impressed. Mm-hmm. Because um, it reminds me a lot of, of uh, Overwatch, but um, you know we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I, y- there might be some new titles that we're not even aware of, but we'll, when it comes out, we'll find out. All right. It, it did look interesting, so we'll see. All right, moving on to the next part right here. Sony. Now this makes so much sense. Whenever they showed the fucking Unreal Engine Five, Sony invests two hundred and fifty million dollars into epic games so hmm. what does this mean not much right now at this point it's just playstation uh putting their own stake into epic games i mean yeah. uh epic games was looking into like uh, or, uh gaining some uh, new investors and sony was like well yeah i mean xbox over here buying up all these freaking studios mm-hmm. let's do something so they did they put some money into epic games this is uh the article from polygon it reads as Sony is making a $250 million investment in Fortnite and Unreal Engine developer Epic Games, according acquiring a minor, minority interest in the studio both companies announced Thursday. According to a joint news release, the investment will allow Sony and Epic to, bro, quote, broaden their collaborations act across Sony's leading platform of entertainment assets and technology and epic social entertainment platform and digital ecosystem to create unique experiences for consumers and creators. And quote. The well, inv- don't sound so excited when you're let, 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 let me ask a question. If if it wasn't for Fortnite, mm-hmm. what does Epic have? Well, they had Epic, ears. The engine. Have- I mean, that's really that's what they really have is their engine. That's it. Yeah. That's exactly. it. Everybody uses their engine. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Everybody the uses their engine, dude. Yeah. That's the thing. Everybody uses their engine already. They're kind of in the forefront of creating a new engine for the new generation. Yep. So everybody, like, because th- their engine is open for everybody. You just got to pay a cut of what you mu- your game makes yeah. to Unreal. So they get a cut of oh, almost all yeah. the Actually, now stuff. they made it even sweeter. I think they said, like, if you don't, if you, the, they don't make, uh, they don't start taking a cut from your game until you make a million dollars first. Correct. So, so it, it used to be like five hundred thousand. So, so yeah, that's like, if good. you're an indie developer, oh man, it's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. No, true. 
and then they make my game uh, they also have their marketplace that they just jumped into in on a PC where uh, a lot of developers are releasing their games on Epic because it's more worthwhile for them. It's cheaper for them. Um, the more money goes to the developers. So Epic's making a lot of good moves. Uh, I'm not surprised that uh, Sony wants to jump in with them because this is a screams exclusive uh, game. Grease Look, the chair. I, 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 Grease the chair. Grease Look, I, I, I would just say this. For example, the the what, the reason they're doing this is as Leah said, they see Xbox buying up all these, and they wanna they wanna have some new content, and they feel like they're gonna have an edge with the engines that uh, Epic provides. But I mean, come on, dude. Like, I, I just don't see it. I I don't. Well, I mean, I understand, like, all these fanboys with Fortnite, you know, like, uh, I guess. Yeah, but think about it. If all these people are using their engine, they're getting a cut of that now. Because mm-hmm. they put a stake in it. So now they're getting a cut of So that's, like, not just a, not just Fortnite. It's almost every game out there. From well, PS5 I can't think of a Xbox game that's series, been, like, so. super popular like Fortnite or even in the same class. Yeah, yeah, Fortnite. no, I'm just saying, you know. And Epic. Like, I, I'm, I'm still thinking, I, I'm looking here yeah. at this, I, nothing comes to mind. So, without Fortnite, they, they wouldn't have anything. To uh, be no, that's here, true. Here's, like, some of the 15 top games right now. Uh, Octopath Traveler uses Unreal. Ark uses Unreal. Conan Exiles uses Unreal. Final Fantasy VII Remake uses Unreal. Oh, I did uh, not know that. Gears Five uses Unreal. Dragon Ball yeah. Fighter Z uses Unreal. Borderlands Three uses Unreal. Observer uses Unreal. Tetris Effect uses Unreal. Shenmue Three uses Unreal. Robo Recall, a pretty fun uh, VR game, uses Unreal. Street Fighter Five uses Unreal. Hellblade Senua Sacrifice. Yoshi's Crafted World. Do you see where all these games are? Everywhere. <laughs> They're everywhere, bro. Yeah. But it's not I mean, just one I, console now. It's it's all, all consoles. So. And of course, Man, Fortnite. <laughs> I, the only games that you mentioned was basically Gears and Final Fantasy that I would play. <laughs> okay, but those are the games the only one you would play. But the fact they're everywhere, every yeah. console, like every system, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like that's. I huge. mean, I mean, you know what? You have a point, and maybe I should correct my statement because. We literally have people playing uh, that stupid ass game that Lowe's plays. Um, uh, that doesn't uh, run out on, on right. Yeah, but I'm just saying people actually buy <laughs> pe- people actually buy that game and play on that. So you're probably right. I don't you know get your mean? point. But yeah, I don't get like, your point. Tra- <laughs> my point is this: people play trash ass games. A lot of people. There's too many stupid people in the world. We still like people think Taylor Swift is one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Like I don't. Taylor Swift. I don't, I'm like I don't know why. I don't know how. Like, I don't even know how she even made it. People think Beyonce can sing. I don't know how. I don't mean. They, but there you go. To the left, now, to the, the left. What I think this, what I think the biggest outcome of this um, is going to be some exclusive games coming from Epic, specifically well, yeah, tailored for the That's what PS5. they're thinking. Yeah. That's what the, the, the. It's not going to happen, man. The stake is going to be. I know what I'm telling you. It's not but going to happen. I, I don't. I don't know if they're going to have exclusive games. At this point, it's like if they do, they'll probably put it on their platform too on the PC side. So I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, we'll I, see. I, we'll see. I, I, I can agree. I, I can agree with that. Now, I don't think we're going to see like a big AAA game exclusive coming from Epic for Sony, but I do see like... Not after Last of Us 2 bombed. Not I mean, if anything, that. you know what this really means? It's probably like, okay, like we were just talking about, like up until the point you reach a million dollars, uh, Unreal take, I mean, uh, Epic takes a cut. At this point, it's like, we're going to start making our games off of this platform, this new engine, brand new engine, and not have to pay that extra fee to use it mm-hmm. and sell a shit ton of copies of this mm-hmm. game. So that's where they're going to make their money back from like, and it's, from right using now, this engine. It's- the best engine out there to develop for these games. So yeah. you're using the best engine available. If you're not using the one that plays, uh, that Sony created for, um, uh, for uh, freaking uh, 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 the one that uh, Kojima used for. Oh, Death that's uh, the one from uh, Horizon and all that. Yeah. yeah, that's the only other one that I think can even come close to this. But and we haven't even seen it in action for PlayStation Five. Like True. Unreal already has a demo out for this. So yeah. I'm yeah. interested in seeing, uh, yeah. Hey, look, all I want from Unreal is for them to do Legend of Zelda or Korean of Time. Like, they have it in the... <laughs> like, they have it... In, yeah, uh, but that's uh, Nintendo, though. I don't think Nintendo's going to do that kind of stuff. That's Nintendo, man. Man, yeah. that would be awesome. I'll be like, let's play. Yeah! But uh, yeah! really quick, just moving along here, we also seen brand new box art for the PS5 games. But honestly, I don't see a difference. It's just a white tag atop. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a slightly oh. better color of blue. 
Look, my, my thing is uh, with this is we, we are literally paying uh, $5 more. Man, put ten. Ten dollars. Oh, ten. Ten dollars more. So okay, even better. Like, come on, man. You can't have the same shitty ass box art. Like, up your game, bro. Make that shit holographic. Fucking make it move around. Like, do something. Scratch like, and like, sniff, like, God damn it. Yeah, like you're taking ten dollars extra. Like no. Game, I can scratch and sniff. I'm sorry. Scratch yeah. sniff, bro. Just just Miles Morales just doing this. Like scratch and sniff, motherfucker. Something, you know what I'm saying? Your, Fuck. I wanna I wanna smell your your sack from inside that fucking tight suit. <laughs> I'm just I'm saying, dead. bro, like the, this is my thing with this whole ten dollars that we're gonna be paying extra now. I don't mind. There better not be no DLC. There better not be that. Oh, well, we're going to have extra content. I don't want to hear that. Fucking There's going to be DLC. I want to have <clears throat> you everything remember, in one game. You're, 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 you're upset about a $10 increase. It's been yes. 60 bucks for over 10 years now. Yeah. This, these okay. prices have not increased for over 10 years. They I have agree. got to adjust that at some point. I agree. Okay. You know? Yeah, but okay. they realize that getting, they can make more money. Higher with, console. Yeah, but they realize like, they can make more money. Yeah, they, go they ahead. realize that they could have made more money with the with the DLCs and microtransactions. That's why there hasn't been an increase. But now that people have been like pushing back against DLCs and microtransactions, they're like, okay, there's gonna be another way. Let's let's bump up the price. Let's say this is a little bit uh, more expensive to develop for now. Uh, but does that doesn't mean they're gonna go away from DLCs and microtransactions? No. JD sounds like that streamer that that Vi Vader or whatever her fucking name is, I where she's know. like, if you just get five dollars, oh. you can have five dollars. You have ten dollars. No, no JD, bad. with ten dollars, with ten dollars, I can literally buy myself two meals for two days at McDonald's. All right. All right? And a fucking milkshake or whatever the fuck else I want with ice. Yeah. So, no, I want more shit. I will, more I will shit. say this. I will say this. Um, yeah, it's not a big change from the box art from the PS4, but the designs they're putting out for these games, they look fucking good. Like, the bo actual bo art of the, uh, of the designs of the title of the games, like, these hoes look legit. Spider-Man Miles Morales looks good. You're Marvel saying Rising that Spider-Man Miles Morales looks legit? This yeah, shit but... looks like a fucking Pokemon card. Like, what the fuck? Like, this here's, shit looks weird. Here's uh, the thing, though. With, with, looks... the, with the physical Bye. copy games starting to go away, Mm -hmm. Putting more effort into that kind of thing is really not going to do them a whole okay. lot of good. Okay, maybe you know? collector's items. Maybe collector's items. Collector's oh, items maybe, yeah. Yeah, but... All right. So new PS4, PS5 box art looks incredible. Microsoft. <laughs> Speaking of the other side of the coin, Microsoft is actually apparently rumored to also be interested in buying Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, which of course includes the Batman game franchise and Mortal Kombat. Thoughts, Woo! prayers. Twitter I mean, I, I think right now Xbox is going on a spree. And I don't know if you guys noticed, this has mostly been happening after the Sony did their gameplay show and things like that. It's like they're like, oh, shit, like, we need games. We need games because – so they're just buying into everything. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully it pans out for them. Uh, I, I hope so. I, I really enjoyed the first uh, two Batman games uh, for Xbox 360, mm -hmm. but it was for PlayStation as well. But the Arkham – Arkham series, I really mm -hmm. enjoyed them. So yeah. hopefully that they'll bring everything back for that. Um, I know they'll have a, a rights for the DL, D, DC universe. I'm, if I'm assuming. Uh, that's one thing where even if they buy out the companies, <clears throat> it's not a sure thing they're getting the IPs as yeah. well because that's owned by a different entity. Yeah, mm. I, thought they said, I thought they said Batman and Harry Potter were not going to be included in no, the sale. Yeah, they're in not fact, included. In so, sale. That, so they would have to negotiate with AT and T, which I believe is the one that kind of has those. But AT and T is on sale too. That's no. what I don't understand. No, they're they're selling their their uh, entertainment division, which is like the Warner Brothers Interactive. Yes, but yeah. it's not the actual rights. Uh, the rights are. They're not selling AT and T. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing where my, or Microsoft. Hopefully, it's Microsoft. Like to be honest, I would be glad if Microsoft got it instead of Activision or EA. No doubts. But the rights for those, uh, uh, you know, franchises, the IPs would have to be negotiated and included in the yeah. deal. It's yeah, not but Microsoft has the money. Microsoft if, has if the money. If anything, like the best thing would do, would what like the best scenario is that Microsoft buys them. They get these studios. They get NetherRealm, Monolith. Avalanche, Traveler's Tale, and of course Rock City. So you have those you'll have those like like you'll have like two top tier yeah. like developers in your roster. Regardless exactly. if you don't keep the IPs of the ones that made them like really popular, you have the people that made those games popular. So you can you have the opportunity. I mean, NetherRealm owns 
uh, Mortal Kombat. So that's already with them. Look, yeah, Netherworld, just by Netherworld itself, like, Netherworld yeah. has done really good games. Like, like, like if you just have I mean, those companies ready to go and you let them say, hey, you do whatever you want to do right now. This is a brand new start. Give us something amazing, something cool, yeah. something we can sell our Xbox with. Like, that would be amazing. Just yes. simply Netherrealm. I mean, having Mortal Kombat as an exclusive, yeah. like, whoa, that's huge. <laughs> that's huge. And I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft even says, hey, make it multi-platform. Uh, but we get all that. You know, that's my thing with money. Xbox. Yeah. They're always like, like, oh yeah, we're gonna own the rights, but let's be fun and share with everybody. I'm glad and I'll be we like, brought that up because it was something I wanted to say about this too. Because Uncle Phil, Phil Spencer, president of Microsoft of Xbox division, he actually said he doesn't really like the idea of exclusives, and he's right. I don't like oh. him either. I don't like him either. You know why? They don't help you. They don't help me. They help the companies they're exclusive too. And the money, all that money, like they get just for one console, it like that's helping them. But imagine you have a you have an Xbox, I have a PS4. We could play Spider Man on both consoles and not like yeah. like argue about oh I have to go get this other yeah, console no. to play or that's not gonna happen. Or hmm. now it is just have one console, just have one console. Then. That's what I'm saying. You have the one console, but you won't be able to play that one game that's on the other one. D is that right, helpful to you? Yeah, like, I mean, are you good with that? Doing it. Are, are you Sony good with are you good with that having to pay another six to seven hundred dollars for another console to play the game that you really want to play? Look, I, I will say this: like that doesn't you help have a point, you. Elias. That that a, helps the companies. You yeah, okay? I agree. You have the point. But if that's the case, they might as well take away Nintendo, take away Xbox, take away PlayStation, and then just make it one console and one monopoly. They're Ooh. not going to do that. They're not going to do no, that. No, keep that's the separate the consoles, but the. But but let us play the games from from like from everywhere. I I agree. Some games, some games should be your dream, man. Like You're yeah. like I really had a problem that 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 Spider Man is exclusive to like PlayStation. I hated that. Like that's a Marvel character. That's like for everyone. Mm -hmm. You did not create that character. You should not keep that character on one console. I hated that. So that I yeah. mean, so I I, I for that. one like would be like hell yeah, give me. Get, let me be able to play that Marvel Spider-Man game on my Xbox, on my PC, on whatever console I want. I will pay you the money. I'll pay the seventy dollars for the next generation version. Like, but no, you know, it doesn't help the companies. So Uncle Phil's no. like right about that. Like, it it's a huge like disadvantage to gamers, but it is a huge advantage to the the companies that are owning the I consoles. Think, I think Phil would be dumb to make his games multi-platform if he wants to win, which He's been talking about winning. We're, we're yep, winning exactly. PlayStation, we well, then the only way you're gonna be able to do that, the way the PlayStation Four won the this current generation, was with exclusives. You can have all the gadgets, all the crap in your system. You can have the best system out there. If you don't have the exclusives, people aren't gonna care. You know, it, it's not gonna sell. You're not gonna win. So yeah, sorry, but if you if but you own the game, only, if you own the game company, only, then it doesn't matter. That only helps you when you already have that console. If you don't have that console, you don't know what's gonna come out for it later on. And then later on, you figure out, oh shit, I can't play this game because it's another console. How is that helpful to you? I mean, I get your point, Elias, but you like, have are to you keep you okay with like, fuck? Now I gotta spend another four hundred bucks on a PS4. Oh, now I gotta spend this much money on Xbox. Like, no, no, I, I agree, but you have to keep in mind this is a business. It's a business, bro. You, you, no, they, I understand not gonna do that. that. Look, 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 that's that's great. I understand it's a business. You do not work for that business. So if you want to act like you work for that business and be like, nah, bro, uh, I'm not moving from this console. I'm gonna stay here and uh, you know, fuck everybody else. Then you're helping that that business. Look, not you're not helping yourself. Look, look, I mean, that's what when, I'm saying. If we had all games all multi-platform, then mm -hmm. we would have a monopoly. There would be one system, one company making basically all. It, we would just have a bunch of game developers, right? The thing is, having these companies with exclusives, they know that the only way they're gonna attract people is by making great games. Mm -hmm. So the fact that there's competition in that aspect, yeah, to me makes me feel like I get very unique experiences. The fact that Nintendo has exclusives, they created a whole system around exclusivity. Mm -hmm. You can only play this on Nintendo. 
I get unique experiences with the Nintendo Switch. I wouldn't have that if they just released their game on every system, right? It's, so I feel like the yeah. fact that there is exclusives, I get experiences I wouldn't get otherwise if there was. Well, you know what? Consoles. You know what? Let me also say this. I, I understand. Like I know. Look, I'm I'm just like I'm I'm literally talking to a wall. Like I know. Like they're not gonna go away from exclusives, but I'm 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 more in terms of exclusives for things that I feel that should not be like like if you're not making this IP from scratch why is that exclusive to you and you only like no like it's just that right now it just goes back to the Spider-Man thing like it, it, you didn't make that you know what I mean like that that's not your ownership that's for everybody let me, let me give you the argument for that they specifically looked when it came to Spider-Man to the developer that would best help them and if Soniac hit it out of the park now let's look at one of the multi-platforms, like the Avengers, mm -hmm. right? Crystal Dynamics. They're making a multi-platform. You know, the game hasn't come out, but I have a lot of doubts about that game on the gameplay, on the graphics. I think it could look way better. And this is what happens when you do it multi-platform. Crystal Dynamics, to me, is, uh, is unproven in even making the uh, you know, wide Crystal Dynamics. I don't know. But anyways. I think they I made think the Final Fantasy game, like the more recent one. I think we'll see a big difference in the quality of the games when you tailor, give it to someone, a, a developer who who has shown they can create that kind of game for a specific system. Resident Evil 2 remake a, looked great on every console. Uh, Resident Evil 3 looked great in every console. Good Assassin's, point. Assassin's Creed Odyssey looks great in every console. Yeah, like, but I'm what are you about talking that. about? I'm not saying Crystal Dynamics <laughs> isn't a proven developer. I'm not saying Crystal Dynamics is a but Create, they've never, in my opinion, creating a live for service game with the Avengers mm -hmm. graphically doesn't look great. That's my thing. It, it, it's yeah. tricky. Look, it's tricky, and it all comes down to what everything in this world comes down to. It's money. And these companies, look, you got to give it to Microsoft. Sony has been around for a long, long, long time. Microsoft put, his, put their whole effort into Halo 1. And when Halo 1 came out, it was that exclusivity that popped uh, Xbox and yeah. made Xbox what it is. So I get your point in the ass, but you have to see the other the other aspect. Yeah, but was going... was Halo ever on PlayStation? Was it ever anywhere else? No. Exactly. No. They, that's, but that's my point. It came from that exclusivity. Them. Yeah, but okay. It, it, fair point. But that's what I'm trying to say. Like, if you're trying to, that's why this, uh, this whole, the, what's that thing that you bought, Elias, from Google? I mean, Elos from Stadia, Stadia or Stadia. That's the reason why they failed. Because if they would have come out with their own personal, handmade fucking game, something well, new, they, unexperienced, they, do. they have their own in-house studio. But at this point, they haven't, they haven't really. It's not. I mean, at this point, it's not even the games that are coming out. It's the service, like. The way they're touting it, like you can play anywhere, but right yeah. now it's just like it's it's not good. Like you cannot play everywhere. They 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 oversold the the information that there was gonna be on there, and they undersold like the, what actually came out. Like no, like that 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 whole Sadia thing has a way bigger issue than just the games. True, but if they would have games, maybe it would have sold better. Maybe that console would have sold better, or the, or the idea of it. I, I get your point, though. I feel like some games should be multi-platform, mm -hmm. like Fortnite, uh, like this hyperspace thing. It should Escape. be multi-platform. Escape, whatever. Um, you know, that should be. <laughs> but there's some games, like, you can't. There, there's no way. No, I mean, I know, I know, like, I know there's not going to be, like, that's not going to go away. I understand it sells stuff. But, but if it, anybody does it, it is Xbox. It if, is Xbox. If, if they do it, done. if they do it, I, I mean, honestly, the best way I, I hope they do it is that it's exclusive to the console for like a year. And after that, it's everywhere or like six months. Like Final and Fantasy, then, David? Yeah, like Final Fantasy. Like yeah. with that, Final Fantasy, I don't mind. I, I wouldn't even mind if Final Fantasy stayed on on, P, on PS4. But honestly, I'm glad it's coming to PC. I hope it's coming to PC because it, it, it will play a lot better on PC. It, you know, guys, if you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, the remake, go check it out. It is a really, really, really good game. I don't have a PS4. I borrowed one and I bought the game. And it, <laughs> I, it was not a bad purchase. I love the game. All right, let's end gaming right there and move into sports. <sighs> Touchdown, it's a home run. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Sports. Space <laughs> sports. The NFLPA. 
is not happy with the NFL virus's plans. Nobody put a link in here, so I don't know where you're talking about. So it's Ooh, on ESPN. Crap. I always put links in. I always put links in. Where is it? <laughs> well, uh, oh, yeah, it is here. It, All right. It's on the NFL I PA. found it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, just checking your sources. This, there are going to be some terms when this when this show comes out on Monday. There are going to be some terms from the NFL and the NFLPA. They're just worried a lot about how things are going to go uh, in regards to the safety of the players. Uh, a lot of these stadiums or owners want their stadiums open. I think twenty five percent. Yeah, um, I think that's what and, they're going to do. And they, a lot of people are hesitant on that. Um, not only that, uh, they're also talking about like what happens to a player's contract if he decides to sit out due to COVID-19 concerns. Uh, the players want a slow ramp up from working out to the practice field to avoid injuries and get comfortable with the new working environment. They, you know, the, they lower down the preseason to two games. You know, how is uh, the lost revenue yeah. uh, going to go? Uh, you know, uh, should how are they going to wear like mask and stuff to prevent themselves from safeties if other players have COVID-19. It's very, very tricky, and they're trying to get 16 games on TV and plus have people there. An NFL game is not good without fans there. I hate to say it. Like, I'm going to see how it works for the NBA. Most sports aren't. I but, mean, if you try to play sports without, without fans, it just looks weird, you know? Man, it, what, yeah. if, what if it's just like cancel the season? Damn. And that's another thing that this I'm okay with it. To... I'm okay with Damn. it. A year, a year without Bill O'Brien, I think it's a good year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's one thing also that they're trying to negotiate in these contracts is what if the season's canceled? What do the players get if the season's canceled? Um, the NFL's already thinking about next year as well. They want um, yeah. the players to agree to a larger, a larger salary cap. Um, so the NFL. The, the players are thinking about this year, but the NFL is also trying to get stuff for next year included in, in there as well. Like, hey, mm. okay, we'll cover you this year, but you guys are going to have to cover us, uh, you know, like let up some things for next year right. as well. So, yeah. That you know, fair. we got some time before the season starts. Um, I feel like, there, of course, these, you know, both parties want to get a deal done. Uh, so I, I, I'm not, you know, I, you know, I mean, go on for another couple of weeks. Yeah. We're going to get a deal done. I would be surprised if the season begins and a deal is not done and the players are striking. I would well, be... I mean, JD, I don't know if you heard this, but there's some stupid ass people saying like, oh, why don't they follow the example of, of Dana White? You know, the, 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 the... buying an island. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And by, and by, they, Cause they feel like they have enough money. Like, uh, and, and literally this thought has brought up I, my personal opinion is there's too many owners and too much money at stake for the NFL to do that. What do you think? What do you think is a good plan for the NBA to do so we can have the season? NFL. I mean, the, NFL, NBA the NFL. 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 <laughs> I mean, both can buy their own fucking island, to be honest. <laughs> you know, to be honest, um, first thing I think they could probably do, and it wouldn't be that difficult to add into the helmets, is add a full face, full plastic face mask into there. I mean, and it's something that they could in, inside their helmets, so something they could that would prevent them from getting hit and maybe have like a little little chin guard underneath to keep to protect their whole face but they could still breathe and have have, would have a problem breathing through it. Did you I hear that about was... that dumb rule where they want these players to play oh but they can't switch jerseys. Oh yeah, they the can't exchange game, jerseys. Right? Yeah, they, they 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 banned that. Bro. You yeah, guys are smacking each other for 60 minutes but you you worried about exchanging jerseys at the end of the game? Yeah, no. don't don't touch, don't touch my jersey, bro. No, uh but uh, no, no way. This let JD answer, players, you jerk. Too, too many players, too many uh, staff to move into an island. They're, you're gonna play from your from your home stadiums. Um, it's just a matter of every single person, every single staff member doing their part. The isolation, like no yeah. way. You know, NBA. It's it's small enough where you can isolate them in a bubble in, in Disney, whatever Disney World. Uh, but NFL is too huge for that. Yeah, yeah and you got to think about it. If, if you're like going to do it, if you want to do the island idea, you do the island idea. You have to do multiple stadiums first of all. That's going to take at least a couple years to build those things. Agree. You know, you can't just you can't just throw a stadium up on. I mean, you can, but it's not going to be it's not going to be professional. It's going to look yeah. like you're like you're playing on a on, on a high school football field. Yeah, exactly. You know, so mm -hmm. it's not going to. That's definitely not no, what you're going to do. So, like I said, I think the NFL is. I mean, I call the NFL being the first league to jump back in. So, but I'm gonna be beat by NBA and MLB. I was close, but uh, <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's all wrapping back up. It's just a matter of these teams doing the uh, these players mm -hmm. doing their part and staying safe. 
And quick uh, note here, what is everybody's thoughts here on Patrick Mahomes' new contract? Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I I have a feeling uh, because th this has happened before previously. I mean, ten year like, contract? I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not talking about the contract. I'm talking about overpaying a player who's not really has he not won been. A Super Bowl? Super, he won a Super Bowl MVP. Uh, you can win MVP. Uh, we've seen that happen with other quarterbacks. Uh, one of the ones with St. Louis Rams with uh, what's his name? Um, uh, I just Kurt got Warner. a new receiver. You know, they paid him like a crap load of money, and then the next year, for several years, he was crap. Uh, you know, we have seen Kerry Collins uh, uh, with uh, the New York Giants when he took the New York Giants to the Super Bowls, and they overpaid him. Just got to so, say Kerry you know, Collins, bro. I'm, exactly. Yeah, no. So, Kerry I, I, I don't what think, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people, in my opinion, a lot of people, and this is just my opinion, I think a lot of people are overhyping up uh, Patrick Mahomes. I think what ends up, what, what ends him, it helps him a lot is Andy Reid. We've seen Andy Reid almost take the Kansas City Chiefs to the Super Bowl with Alex Smith. I mean, at this uh, point, you can you can you can kind of like hold that that opinion too, like in the air until we see what happens with Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. I agree. I agree because I to me a lot of the the production that Tom Brady did is because of Bill Belichick. That's just my opinion. Um, I, I, and the reason I have that opinion <laughs> is because don't forget, uh, uh, you know, Bill Belichick went 11 and five uh, without Tom Brady when Matt Tom Brady went out for the season. Super Bowl. So he, like, well, what's your point? He, Matt, he will not has no Matt Castle. He will Matt Castle. Yeah. But uh, Matt Castle was shit afterwards. So I don't want to hear nothing. We'll see. I'm ready to guess it. Hey, hey, Castle hey. got zero. So I hope. I hope that because I like Bill Belichick, <laughs> even though he is a cheater. I do like the fact that. You know, he's just doing, he's a coach. He's not on the field. He doesn't control a lot of stuff, but he's, he's making, trying to make sure that, you know, he, he wins every single year. Um, and he doesn't consider like any, anybody else's opinion. Uh, but we'll see with Tom Brady as well. But as far as Patrick Mahomes, congratulations. He did, I'll give him this. He did take uh, the Kansas City Chiefs and thank Bill O'Brien. Thank Bill O'Brien hey, for uh, that contract. Alex Smith couldn't do it. Hey, look. Alex Bill, Smith if, couldn't if, do it. If he would have played against Alex Bill O'Brien, he would have been able to. Alex do it. Smith has been on like on really good teams, and he couldn't do it. So actually, I wouldn't. I, I don't mind this contract for Patrick Mahomes. I think. I think the NFL nowadays is like more of a you better be good now, or else you're gonna get the hell out of here after your your first rookie contract is over. So I mean, it's a smart move on the Chiefs' part, to be honest. Because if anything, they probably got him on the low. Like after these years have passed, especially if he if he continues yeah. like being this productive for them. I mean, uh, yeah, I but he, say, he did win a Super Bowl about, for them. That's their second. That's their second Super Bowl in like fifty years. So yeah, he did so, win that. So, so I think okay, Andy Reid has found himself a great QB, a top five QB in the in the in the league, damn, no doubt. Damn, um, RIP to my boy from prime, the Eagles. What's his name? <laughs> Donald McNabb. Donald McNabb. In his prime. <laughs> so why you have to sign this man? And you, if you want to not worry about the QB position for many years, hey. 10 years, I'm sure the back end of the of the contract is where he's going to get most of the money or maybe the middle because right now they are paying a lot of players, so he's probably taking uh, not as much money in these uh, next few years coming Oh, up. well, actually, here, let me read this from ESPN. It says, League sources told the ESPN's Adam Schefter that the deal is worth $450 million over the 10-year the period and could be worth up to $503 million. Stop moving your chair. Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> it's sorry. so loud. I don't know why it, it's so loud. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. The extension includes a $140 million injury guarantee and well as a no trade clause it is also included the ability includes the ability for mahomes to have out outs if certain guaranteed mechanisms aren't uh exercised a source told Schefter. so uh like i said I mean, this contract is going to define contracts for other quarterbacks in the future it really is you, yeah you still you still have deshaun watson who hasn't been assigned um you know uh we Texas also have lamar <laughs> Lam that's what i'm well i mean with bill yeah. o'brien you don't you don't know i mean bill o'brien uh, uh, has paid stupid ass players, has done stupid actually, ass Actually, let me take that back. They pay somebody, and then later on, they're like, hey, actually, can we take some of that money back? <laughs> they did it to, what's the name? Andre Johnson. Andre they Johnson. Did it, they did it to JJ. Fuck. But they they only did it under Bill O'Brien. I don't know, man. So, uh, well, what, but what, what were you going to say, JD? You were going to say something, man. Yeah, go ahead, JD. I'm, you know, we're all looking at how, you know, this is great. Good job, Patrick Mahone. But you got to think about it. This is going to shaft the fucking people who go to watch the games. 
Because you know ticket prices are going up, parking pot prices are going up, mm-hmm. concession prices are going to go up to afford this shit. And what happens if he gets injured in that first fucking in that first uh, year? You know, because you know, hundred and forty million dollar yeah, injury guarantee. Exactly. I think he'll be year. fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not talking fine. about him. I'm talking about him. I'm talking about the people who, uh, the people on the back end who are gonna have to cover. Well, you want to have a Super Bowl shit, winning you know? team, or you go, you go with mediocrity. If you, yeah. like, you like cheap ticket prices and you like just making it to the playoffs, and yeah, but ten years. Teams, then by all means. How many how many quarterbacks have been if you want quarterbacks have been Bowl, good for ten years? I want my team keeping the best. Well, okay, out. JD. Uh, for okay, so the quarterbacks have been good for ten years. Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, Drew yeah. Brees, Tom Brady. <laughs> A handful out of how many years has the NFL been around? I agree. Yeah. I agree. You so, know, but so. I, I think that in, in relations to what Lowe's was saying, um, he's right, though. If you want to be out of mediocrity, you have to pay. And yeah, we've seen this with, mean, with the Dallas Cowboys. We've seen this <laughs> with the Houston Texans, the Tennessee Titans. Uh, uh, you know, we've seen this with uh, uh, the Rams, even though in recent years – like in other years, they've been they've been trying to get in a lot of players. You know, to, in order to win, you got to have the best players and the best team, the best coaches, and that all takes money. I mean, like you said, JD, this does affect the person buying the ticket. But then the person buying the ticket understands, like, like they're getting a a a, a good product versus like you know the Browns who are just forever in the <laughs> shithole, dude. Okay, like, look, yeah. like, come on, Browns. Like the money, the money, the money that the, go, the team is gonna end up like increasing. Like, I mean, the 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 prices that the team is gonna end up increase, increasing is going back to the fans. Is going back to the people that are are are, are fans. So if anything, if if the fans really do have a problem with this type of contract, with this type of money being given to one person. Then they'll talk with their wallets too and be like, "We're not going to go to your games. We're not going to buy your shit." That's what I mean, I'm saying. This is, but as this long is the as year they keep for, doing for, it, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's nothing we can do about it. This is the year that the Bill O'Brien should be out, and you know, uh, we as fans, if we don't go to the games and we don't support the team, you know, we could have a voice. But unfortunately, here in Houston, we have a lot of people that still go to the games and still sell out the stadium. You know, yep. I've been I've been living in mediocrity with the Texans for such a long, long time. You know, this year was the last straw with with uh, Bill O'Brien getting rid of uh, one of the no the best wide receiver in the NFL. That was uh, so practi- stupid. I can't still can't believe that shit uh, for practically nothing. <laughs> uh, and, and like and like and I paid money that's all those crazy, years long dude. ago. So that's why I got rid of all my merch from the Texans. I'm not buying anything Texans. I'm not going to any of the games until Bill O'Brien is, is gone. Because and that's the only way I can speak in my voice. But you know, if Los goes to the games, there's nothing we can do. If 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 Elias goes to the games, nothing Fuck we can do. No. And and believe me, I I, I and my job is about people that don't really watch football, and they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna go to the Texans or let's go Texans. It's like these they're just idiots, and they're they're still gonna buy tickets. And below shit, it's still gonna be the head coach <laughs> of the Texans. <laughs> All right, and just moving in here into the last second in, in segment in sports, uh, in the MLB, uh, Yankees closer Ar- Arlo Des Chapman tests positive for coronavirus. Alos? Yeah, uh, man, Yankees, uh, one of their best pitchers in the staff, their closer, um, a guy who got knocked by Jose Altuve uh, last year. Uh, Is that the guy who was uh, just smiling when he looked back at the yeah. ball? Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. him. So, yeah, um, <laughs> Let's he go cheaters. got COVID-19. Uh, and it's, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, this, you know, he's one of the, uh, the Yankees uh, face, man. Like, um, recently, uh, one of the Astros, like, people, I don't know, man. It, it's just a lot of, like, do I feel bad for a role this? Yes. It, was he one of the players and one of the people talking trash to the Astros? Yes. Because they cheated? So, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this one, but he does have COVID-19. He's not going to be there for the early part of the season. They're going to keep him isolated, which is the right thing to do. Uh, and so we're not no – real, no real time frame on when he'll be able to get back. I think he might only miss, like, the beginning part of the season, a couple of games I, in. I think it'd be fine. Like, if he quarantines himself for 14 days and retests, and as long as he's yeah. not feeling any symptoms, he should be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. So I, I think he should be good. Uh, uh, not like I said, he's expected to only miss a couple of games at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he he'll be back there. Uh, I want to see the Astros beat on this guy again. So hopefully he comes back healthy. <laughs> All right, let's end sports right there. Move into pop culture. Pop pop. Damn, almost. All right, USA. AOK is looking into banning TikTok. Uh, according to CNN Business, CNN Business, the United States is looking into banning TikTok and other Chinese social media apps. Uh, according to this article, it reads as the United States is, quote, looking at and quote, banning Chinese social media apps, including TikTok. Secretary of State Mike Pompei said on Monday, Pompei suggested uh-huh. that- Suggested that the possible move during an interview with Fox News, Laura Ingram, adding that, quote, we're taking this very seriously. And, quote, Pompey also asked by Ingram whether the United States should be considering a ban on Chinese social media apps, quote, especially TikTok, end quote, quote, with respect to Chinese apps on people's cell phones. I can assure you that the United States will get this right. Uh, get this one right too, Laura, <laughs> end quote, said he said he said, quote, that said whatever, quote. I don't want to get out in front of the president, Donald Trump, but it's something we're looking at, end quote. Um, I mean, I, I really, I know TikTok has exploded uh, yeah, over the past all over couple faces. of months. It, it, it's all over. Um, you can't go on Facebook without a TikTok. Uh, I, you know, I, I do not have one. Um, I think it's entertaining. Uh, but if it is tied to, you know, China being able to, use some of your personal stuff i think that's incorrect so the way i see it yeah take it off why not they still have what snapchat instagram what what, what do the kids have nowadays JD, JD, the kids yeah the, 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 thing is, the, the resident tiktoker I, I actually do get on tiktok quite a bit um no, the oh. thing with that is oh. well, here's the thing is the thing is um first yeah, of all the, they, they move the headquarters out of they move the headquarters out of hong kong they're in singapore now so the stuff that they they're worried about you know, China trying to get involved in shit, they're not going to be able to. Uh, mainly, they've got a U.S. headquarters as well, but a lot of stuff is that. So, I mean, and what, what information are they selling them? I mean, how no, many people so get on TikTok? The thing is, Everything the you're owners clicking. of the app, um, it's a company that's, that's owned by the Chinese government. So, and hack, uh, hackers, people who, like, go in that shit have seen that TikTok goes and grabs a lot of information that other apps don't, right? I mean, we've seen uh, the, go- the U.S. government has banned it from U.S. Uh, government-issued phones, Amazon. I mean, th- so it's proven that, yes, it is obtaining information that normally isn't obtained by other apps, mm-hmm. and it is run by a state-run uh, uh, company. Uh, company. Yeah. So they are getting information, right? The company is getting information, and it's run by China. So regardless of where their headquarters are at, so I don't download the app because I, I mean, not that I have any fucking information worth stealing, oh, but boomer ass. nonetheless, I mean, <laughs> fuck China. So yeah. God uh, damn. Okay. <laughs> Tell us how you feel, how you really feel. Uh, so yeah. I, I support this message. App. And a lot of, I mean, India, India straight out banned the app yeah, from they their did. country. I think Australia is uh, doing the same, aren't they? Reasons. No, I think we, we ought, no? uh, I, I think yeah. I think we ought to do it. I think right now with the relations that the United States has with China, I think it's the best bet. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a lot of high tensions right now. Yeah, and I think it's the best bet to do that. And then not only that, because uh, they also brought up any other apps Chinese related. I really think we should overall. Um, if, you know, I'm I'm from the I was born 1987. I, I've gone through the 90s. I've seen the change <laughs> and how everything is almost produced by China. And you know. With, with respect to the way the U.S. used to be in regards to being, you know, American-made, that has pretty much gone out the window. So we need to bring that back in, in order to focus on ourselves and it's, our country and, and just stop relying on JP China. 2020, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this. If, <laughs> if you think the BLM no riots all. were bad, wait until they ban TikTok and all the TikTok kids come out and riot. Oh, Let them riot. Let them riot. You know what? I was watching that uh, Philip DeFranco episode where he was talking about TikTok and all the top TikTokers. I was like, I don't know any of these fuckers. Like, I don't know. I have <laughs> no idea who you are. But they no, have, like, hey, they have hey, like hey, millions hey, of like like. And you know what it does? The algorithm purposely, when someone uh, first does it in their first post, the algorithm makes their first post really popular so they stick around. 
And it reminded uh, me of you posted your first post. Yeah. And you were like, a lot of people saw it. I'm like, no. <laughs> No, actually, my my third or four, uh, third or second post got way more views. Actually, oh okay, it wasn't yeah, they the first change, one. They, 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 they can change the algorithm too, so it's not the same as it used to be. Yeah, I don't know actually, how I got those, those okay. three K views, but ever since then, I try to replicate it. It hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was his only viral video. All right, moving on, moving on. Tron Three details released. Apparently, yes, it may be coming directly to Disney Plus. The script is done, and, and Daft Punk what? Jared Leto might star in Tron Three. Yes, Woo! Daft Punk may return as well, and the director of Tron Legacy might return as well. Thoughts? Twitter thoughts and prayers. Uh, I, I enjoyed the previous Tron movie. I know a lot of people were like, "It's no." <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I like the world, the way they presented it uh, after like the '80s. So I'm hoping they do it. I mean, and not only that, I, I love I love Daft, Punk, Daft Punk's music. Yes. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm I'm always down with yes. that. Too. So the only real you know, problem I had there. with that one, the only problem I had with that one was Clue, the yeah, way he the, the way his head looked. The CGI like, was the CGI was bad. Was <laughs> expensive and probably really unnecessary. But I guess and it, it was, looked like crap. It was the easiest way to do it, I guess, for them to be honest. Yeah, but that's, that's I mean, it's the same. I mean, that's Disney. Disney did the Marvel movies with the same kind of CGI with their car, their, their I, I aging was, technology. I you know, it was a different company that did the CGI, isn't it? Hey, look, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the movie. I watch it, and I, it's just slow. It's just not all the action. I think that's what yeah. fucked up. They should yeah. have added more action. Hopefully, this time around, they learned their lesson and put action because people well, will go out to see Tron. It's just, it's the original was was slow too. It wasn't it wasn't fast yeah. paced like, really like that people were expecting. So I mean, it's it's not like they went like they they veered off any like in a different direction than the original. No, it was kind of along the same style and same path as the original did. You know, so it's not. Yeah, but you know the people were about that. You know, they yeah. want blood, they want gore, fucking throat slash, guts cut open. You know, what I'm saying? spinning all over the ground. What? You know? Yeah. <laughs> bro. All right, Tron Three. It's gonna be coming <clears throat> out. Uh, moving on to the next section here, Malcolm and Marie. Now, this is a movie that was just made in between quarantine, right? Like it was made like, uh, actually, let me pull it up. I'll tell you exactly when it was made. Uh, it was made between June seventeenth and July second. Now, why is this movie being brought up in this topic? Because, I mean, it doesn't matter. This Zendaya is in it. Nobody cares that the other guys in it either. But the point is. That they made a movie during COVID, and yeah, and now they're using the way they filmed this movie as like the kind of like the template to bring back Hollywood, because they were super cautious about everything. Like people had to be like uh, tested two weeks <clears throat> prior to coming. They had to be quarantined before they came. Once they're on the property, mask on, uh, 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 gloves on. If you're not like an actor or something, if you're part of the crew, uh, it was like super high, like, like safety measures to avoid anybody getting COVID. And they were able to complete a movie. So now they're saying like, we can probably see this as a stepping stone towards bringing back a lot of movies. Cause I, I believe there was like about a 95% drop off yeah. after, after COVID started. Even De Niro, De Niro got hit hard. Robert De Niro got hit hard. Yeah, what do you um, guys think about this though? I mean, the, I, I I'm perfectly fine with it. My only issue is how are you going to present your movie to the masses? Okay, no one's gonna go to the movie theaters. Online. You have apps now. You have to figure out a way to allow us On to demand. enjoy the movie. They've been doing it. Okay, no, no, no. It's different. That's different. Uh, movies that are just coming out to allow everybody to instead of going to the movie theater and spending all this fucking money on tickets and popcorn that's like $17 yeah. where I can watch these movies on the uh, in the comfort of my own home. Yeah, they're that's on demand. That's where I, No, that on demand is different. I mean, come on. Now. No, we literally been watching movies and we pay like yeah. $20 to watch them. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, on demand. Right? What? Bro, fucking Trolls World Tour got like millions of dollars and AMC got pissed off. Yeah. Like what are you talking about? They already been doing it. At this point oh, Okay. It, I, I, I gotta find out more. Yeah, at this point, like more. it's already happening. It's just it, it's not even how they're gonna present it, how they're gonna like show it to us. It's how they're gonna put it together to before showing it. It's an app call on demand. No. <laughs> no. Hi, I want like okay, 
they release like movie movies that should be in theater on Amazon Prime, on YouTube. Okay, okay. But the thing is, is like AMC has their own. But but the thing is, they're, they're charging a premium price for them. They're not charging five dollars. Oh, they're charging twenty dollars for these movies. I'm okay with that. I have popcorn. That's what I'm saying. Cold. They're I'm already do doing it. it. They're but, doing but, it. But, but some people like uh, Christopher Nolan. He is having yes. issues with this because he wants his movie shown in a theater. So yep. I think his movie is probably going to be the first one that's going to be released that's brand new and that's going straight to theaters first. Yep, and I ain't going to go watch it. And I ain't going to watch it either. I'm going to go watch it. Fuck it. <laughs> Chris, Christopher Nolan, like, this guy is adamant. Like, I want Tenet on the theaters. I want Tenet in the theaters. Yep. Like, I'm a, he's even pushing theaters. He's been one of the catalysts pushing theaters to open early so he could show his fucking movie. Like, this guy's addicted. This guy doesn't want to release it on demand. He wants to release it in the theaters. Like, he fucking has a heart on for this shit. So, that, fuck this guy. I mean, <laughs> I really want to see Tenet. I'm really interested in seeing Tenet, but I'm not going to go take my ass. I to can't wait to put theater. on, like, two masks, uh, some goggles. Oh, nah, you're tripping at me. Some uh, gloves, nah. like, three pairs of gloves. Like, the moment it's out for digital, the Remember moment gloves. it's out for fucking 4K DVD, I'm more than glad to get it then. But I ain't paying a fucking dime. To I'm gonna go take my it. my Lysol spray down my chair before I sit down. <laughs> like you want me to pay? Bring my own soda and popcorn. You want me to pay another twenty dollars just for? Oh, you know what? Me? I'll probably do what they do for like the toilets, the public ones, where you just they have like the sheets where you put it on the seat. You know what I mean? I put that on my, on those, my chair. Yeah. Fuck it. It is what it is. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just waiting till Walmart starts to drive and stuff. I'll go to that. Moving on. Jaden Pickett Smith apparently had an affair with August Ala Salina. I don't know who that is. I'm I don't know let, who this I, is. I'm gonna let JP go with this because he's the one who's like adamant about yeah. it. So yeah. on her Facebook show, uh, on her Red Facebook Table, show, Red, Red Table, her and Will Smith, like they, like at the very beginning, it was just them two, and they're like, "We're gonna talk about this," and then we're gonna they talk start about talking. This. To, we're gonna talk about this. So they started talking about how there was a period in time when they were about to be separated. They weren't fully separated, but they were very, very close. They were separated and not divorced. Not divorced, correct. So they took in this guy, this singer. I don't even know who the fuck this is. Uh, but apparently they took him in. He was having mental health issues. Uh, and Jada Pickersmith was helping him, and she was making him feel better and doing this whole thing. Mm. You know, she was like, I'm going to just give it to him. And she gave him, you know, she gave him the kitty. So she had it. Basically, in legal terms, an affair. Okay, it was an affair. Mm -hmm. They were still married. They yeah. weren't married. So she was bringing it up to Will Smith, and they just had this long discussion on why she did it or what she did. And Will Smith was Will Smith took it in like, yeah, okay, you know. And then he was then he said, oh yeah, and I got my revenge too. So everyone's like, oh, what the hell's going on? So because James Pickett Smith's a lot is one of those persons that's like always preaching like how women should be or whatever, whatever. And she's got a lot of backlash on Twitter over this simply because of the fact that they're like, you say all this and then you go ahead and do that. And yeah, maybe you were separated, but you weren't even fully divorced. Like, you know, that hinders trying to get back together with somebody. But then again, each marriage is different. Everyone's different. They have their own type of relationships. Uh, but then with Will Smith, what he said, everyone thinks now that for sure, for sure, he smashed Margot Robbie. And there's allegedly. a lot of things coming. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> and, and yeah. you know, hey, if he did, that's a good way to revenge. There you go. Uh, so that, it's all over Twitter. It's just good to see how people talk, like, they give their opinion on it, even though they're not in that marriage. But I, I got to give it to Will Smith. He was just like, that's stuff that I would not air, Okay. Yeah, he was I just like, about that he was like, there's a meme about his face. I mean, because like, it, I mean, for him, it's probably like old news. What was it like four years ago or something like that? Yeah, four or five years ago, something like that. Yeah. I mean, this is a long time ago. It's just getting out now. Because yeah, I, I mean, think true. I think that rapper guy, he was on the Breakfast Club. He was talking about it, and then that's when everything I, started blowing up. I mean, he, the guy says that Will Smith gave him his blessing to smash his wife. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I believe it, bro. Fucking Hollywood. They're wild, fool. You ever seen that uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Goddamn. Damn, <laughs> hey, man. That was, a, that was a good movie. My favorite part is the ending when he burns her with the flamethrower. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's what happened. And a lot of people are making fun of Will Smith. And 
and his little face that he makes. And uh, like I said, he took it in well. He was just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, I guess. But yeah, there you go. Ooh, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, happy hey, let me with show you this exchange. This exchange between Fifty Cent and Will Smith. Oh uh, God. So, so Fifty Cent goes, "Yo, Will, you were right over there." Uh, <laughs> Will Smith goes, "Yes, I'm cool. I appreciate your concern, my brother. This is all over DM." Um, then uh, Will Smith, but why she tell you that shit on the show for everybody to see? And Will Smith, like, we broke up, so she did her and I did me. And then, and then, <laughs> and then Fifty says. Then she only says she can give you uh, permission for somebody to blow her blow her back out, and and uh, Will Smith fuck you fifty, fuck you fifty, and uh, and fifty goes wait what I do? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like look man, it's just I, I think it's just funny how it's out there like that. I, you just don't do that. You don't hear a lot of people be open about that. But I guess with Jada I mean, Pink Smith. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's probably just to get better to get it out there and just blow and just like put it out there and like move on from it. Cause like yeah. they would, they would all like ever since that guy said that shit about Jada. At this point, it would have been like always like like something to ask them about always. Like, hey, did you? Is this true? Hey, did that really happen? Does Will Smith know? Is that really his kids? You know, shit like that. So it's better just to get it out of the way. And and just uh nothing to do with this conversation, but just to make fun of Leo from Canada. Shout out to Leo from Canada. Uh, I follow him on Spotify. He's literally listening to Bad Girl by Usher in the I Love the 2000s R&B. Damn, shuts out. <laughs> by the way, fuck, I didn't, I didn't even make a mention of that shit. I forgot to say, <sighs> this Hump Day Show's episode is uh, kind of like a, a meet and greet with uh, guys from that podcast, uh, Play by the Earlobe. Uh, make sure you guys watch it. it. It was pretty entertaining. We just go back and forth and banter about like our podcast episodes and whatnot, what's going on and everything in the world. Uh, so yeah, shouts out to the play it by the ear. Play it by the ear, more guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you guys for, for, for hopping I on. I literally with should take a. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can. Show All right, you do it. that. I'm gonna I'm get into the last topic here because we're running long. Right. Charlie right. Daniels. Charlie, is okay. that the guy who's saying double cane down the door? Damn it, where is yep, it? that's him. Yeah. All right, Charlie oh, Daniels know. passes away at the age of 83. Uh, how did he pass away? I didn't, I didn't see the details on this one. You know, I I think it was just. Uh, I don't think I don't think it was COVID related. No, I don't right think so right either. Uh, okay, let me just read this article. The one you posted posted on here from the New York Times. Yeah. I just uh, remember that song from a Guitar Hero. <laughs> uh, Nashville. Uh, Charlie Daniels, a singer, songwriter, and bad and band leader who was a force in both country and rock for decades, bringing a brash, down home persona and blazing fiddle work to hits like "Double King Went Down to Georgia." Died on Monday in Nashville. He was 83. His publicist announced the death at Summit Medical Center in Hermit. Her- Hermitage, Hermitage, yeah, uh, section of the city, saying the cause was a uh, hemogra- oh. Hemor- hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke. Fuck, I'm having <laughs> one too. Uh, Mr. Daniels made his first remark his mark as a session mus- musician in the late 1960s and early 70s, playing guitar, bass, fiddle, and banjo on Nashville recordings by Bob Dylan, Ringo Starr, and Leonard uh, Cohen. Uh, he also produced albums for the Young Bloods, including groups. Uh, including the group's 1969 uh, folk rock uh, touchstone, Elephant Man. Uh, but his greatest acclaim came as the leader of Charlie Daniels Band, a country rock en- ensemble that hosted the Volunteer Jam, the Free Willing Southern Music Festival established in 1974 that featured Roy Acuff, Stevie Ray Vaughan, James Brown, and the Marshall Tucker Band. Modeled after the Allman Brothers, another regular at the, at the jam, Mr. Daniels Band used uh, dual lead guitars and dual drummers in service of an expen- expansive Im- improvisational sound that included elements of country blues b- bluegrass rock and western swing formed in 1971 the uh, t- early daniels band earned a reputation early for on for recording material of uh of an outspoken counterculture bent much of it written by mr daniels all right uh, so uh, you put this in there. So I'm, I'm, uh, you were like a fan of his. Or were you listening to his music? I was. We, we listened to a lot when I was growing up. I mean, oh, we, okay, we, okay. my folks were big in the country music. We listened to a lot of his stuff. I mean, definitely, you know, definitely went down to Georgia. That's a big one. Everybody's gonna remember. Right. You know, even even people growing up today know that one. Um, it's just a lot of stuff. I mean, it, again, he was controversial even back then. You know, it was it wasn't right. even you know he, yeah he's he did not pull punches. You know, and it was just a matter of he put out stuff that he, people enjoyed. You know, it was him and him and Hank Williams Jr. Those guys were you know, just were just throwing out stuff that. You know, it had a it had a good sound. It was fun, and a lot of people, some people didn't appreciate it. But he wasn't going to tailor his stuff to make people to you know to make the uh, 
the people who didn't like his stuff happy. You know, he was going yeah, to continue to be who he was. He wasn't trying to be so. like mainstream. He was just trying to do his own yeah. thing. I see. Oh, yeah, so. Well, Shout like, out to him like that. Yeah, Zone rest leader. in peace, Charlie Daniels. I, I do remember listening to that song a lot, too, back in the day. He's, yeah. Man, Guitar Hero, dog. No, not even a Guitar <laughs> Hero. It was just like, uh, like something else I used to listen to off of. But uh, yes, so that's going to uh, close out our episode today. Um, I guess let's get into our final punches real quick. Los? Um, my final punch. I've been watching Marcella. Uh, what the this, fuck is that? This, uh, this is a kind of like a, a, a drama about a detective who, you know, has a mental problem. So it's all kind mm. of a fix in there. I really like it. Uh, it's three seasons. We have me and my wife. I ran through two. We're on the third season. It's not as good as the previous two so far, but we'll see. We're only a couple of seasons in on season three. So if you're looking for something to watch while you're you're in, you're you're you know you're you're trapped inside your home. Marcella on Netflix. I I give it my thumbs up recommendation. JD, um, lot of lot of going on here. I've been playing a lot of GTA Five, and I can think. Of, I think. Oh, I did see something this morning. I think it was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Vivica Fox wants as as has basically given her endorsement for Zendaya to play her daughter in Kill Bill Three. Wait, this is gonna be a Kill Bill Three? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's already. Uh, he's already been working on it. He's oh, got. He's, I mean, it came up, the information. All this you know, information for that came out in December, but I mean, just this morning, I think she tweeted and said she, hey, you know, hey, I prefer she'd love to have Zendaya play it. And it's just like, eh, that would work. But I mean, the, I don't the original know. I actress. Can't, is I can't really around, see too, Zendaya so. as like a killer or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, JP, oh, uh, go woke, go broke. Uh, that's what? my message um, to everybody out there. Uh, you go woke, you gonna go broke. Uh, we can see that from Naughty Dog with their 85% sales that are dropping off tremendously. <laughs> still on that. I, I still on that. Um, I, I and the reason I'm saying Fast on that is, is selling because PS4 exclusive. Hey, yep. you know what? But but yeah. And I've I've been looking like I've literally been doing my research on it and like, of course you are. like sure. get play, there's like get it's get so not bad. play the game. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad that they're they're not even accepting returns. Like people are trying to return the game and they're not they're not accepting it. They literally have to like say no, we're, we're, you can't do that. Of course, as I said, you know, there's gonna be people that like the game. Like I said, there's people that like Animal Crossing and, and Pokemon. So we have idiots out there. Uh, hey. But uh, <laughs> you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, but I feel like if we don't take a stand now, you know, things are gonna be input. We play games to have fun. Not to be invoked with your theory of why the world is what it is. Four million so. copies sold worldwide, becoming Dang. the fastest ever PlayStation Four exclusive, beating Marvel Spider Man three point three and God of War three point one in the same. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Elliot, Elliot right. for this part, just put up a graphic of somebody kicking a dead horse, okay? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I guess for me, just to close it out as well. Uh, I've been I started a new game. I've been playing uh, Man of Medan, Medan. I mean, yeah, I don't know how to say it. It's pretty good so far. It's pretty interesting. Um, graphics card been brand new. Graphics card been amazing. I love it. Well worth the money. And today I was like, hey, Amazon, this shit was $20 cheaper today. Can I get some money back? I'm like, we don't do that, sir. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me talk to your supervisor. All right, sir, we're going to put $20 into your account. That's what I thought. Thank you, Amazon. <laughs> Work hard. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for everybody watching and listening across all platforms, which include, of course, YouTube. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course, brought to you all by Anchor. Anchor lets us distribute the podcast audio versions everywhere you can listen to a podcast. So thanks again, everybody. You can catch us again also on YouTube, I don't know, excuse me, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, your mom. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See ya.